Well, we're coming out to see uh, Rob Collister, and uh, here we are in our social distancing mode. Mm -hmm. Very nice. A bit more wind again today, but let's hope we can fight the elements. Uh, I want to talk to you on this uh, interview about um, tourism, because we would actually, every year, probably around this time, on maybe senior race day, be up at the grandstand doing a, a look back at events. So let's start with the tourism aspect of the TT and how it's obviously hit so many people. Your confidence levels, where we're we going for next year, and that sort of thing. Yeah, I think it's been um, an incredibly difficult period. Um, the cancellation of um, the TT this year and um, the Festival of Motorcycle, which incorporates um, the Classic TT and the Manx Grand Prix, has had a major effect on our hospitality industry. Um, they are struggling, um, but I think it's, it's worth me mentioning from the outset that I do sincerely thank our loyal um, fan base that do come back and um, support the TT every year. I mean, without them, we would be lost, and they are incredibly loyal. And we do have um, um, a loyal um, hotel sector as well, and they are struggling at the moment. And we've got to find a way through this, because if we go back six months, confidence was high, bookings were up significantly. We had, we had uh, actually turned around a major corner this year compared to the last over the, from from four or five years ago. Everything was going in the right direction, and suddenly COVID-19 hit us, and everything's gone out the window. Uh I want to talk about hotels and everything because they're having such a hard time. But on the other side, we had all these people, TT visitors, who had massive problems getting their money back. And, and, I, and I can see both sides of this argument. How, how do you think it should have been handled? Because some people gave refunds, some people obviously were delighted to book the 21 here. But people who actually wanted to get their money out, and there were quite a few, weren't there, coming to the surface, hotels were refusing. And no, I don't, think, I don't think it's right to use the word refusing. Okay. I think this is incredibly complex. I've been in the middle of this since um, I was made aware of it from loyal supporters, as I've said, people who come to the mm -hmm. island year in, year out, come to our events, support our event, our flagship event. But on the other side, you've got a hotel that took a booking, not knowing that COVID-19 was going to happen. That booking or a, a, a lot of TT bookings are non-refundable. They, they are very clear in their terms and conditions that the bookings are non-refundable. What then happens is you then have um, providers such as Booking.com, Expedia, etc. clawing that money back through other, other means and automatically giving that back to the fan where they can. And that has created um, a financial situation for certain hotels which gave those bookings in good faith the bookings were very clear from the t at the time when those bookings were made that they were non-refundable, non-returnable. However, this is where it gets complicated. You have the hotel which has that difficult financial situation. They're seeing money being taken out of their account. Some would say that, uh, I won't use the word unlawfully, but the, the money's been taken out of their account. Well, by these third-party bookings? Uh, right? By these third-party bookings who have right. made a decision themselves. So them. if you take yeah. booking.com, they made a decision as an organization to give back full refunds. Oh, okay. Now that is created, even though the booking was very clear that it was non-refundable. Yeah. So we have that situation and the hotels are in, in serious trouble yeah. trying to address that. We then, as I say, have a loyal supporter who can't come to our event this year, who feel that um, they either want um, to advance that booking to 2021, which I applaud. And I do take this opportunity to thank every single hotel on the Isle of Man and B&B, &B, um, guest house, campsite, that has been able to take those bookings forward to 2021. It may create a financial problem for them in 2021, but we'll try and help them and address that in 2021. But here today, they've tried their best because every booking that is not refunded, every booking that is not forwarded to 2021 can and does create a reputational problem for this island and one that the hotels did not create in many ways. Mm -hmm. We then have, um, as I say, these loyal fans, supporters, who feel that they're entitled to either have their money back or um, entitled to have their booking forwarded to 2021. It is complex, it is not straightforward, and it's one that we're trying to get our heads around. At the same time, government... Well, you have to step in, you think? Government have to step in and, and uh, help out the hoteliers slash the people who have effectively probably lost a lot of money. Some of them seem to have lost thousands of pounds, obviously, because they're coming from far fields. And that is that is the problem. These are people who don't just come for one year. Sometimes it's a once in a lifetime trip, but a lot of the time they are people who come every year. Mm. They're very loyal supporters and we thank them for that. If you take the steam packet, for um, example, 
The Steam Packet as a company gave back around 90% of their deposit. <laughs> the reason why they did that is because those bookings, their terms and conditions was very clear. Mm -hmm. So when people say they can't get their money back, they do need to refer back to their terms and conditions, see what the booking actually says. No one has seen the one coming, obviously. So no. that's the, the trouble from both sides of the argument, I yes. suppose. Isn't and it? government has already stepped in to actually help hotels mm -hmm. to get over the initial shock of COVID-19, to try and mothball some of those hotels, try to keep them um, as, as a recoverable as we can to make sure that we have hotels and we have a hospitality sector ready to go in 2021 when we get back to normal. The Chief Minister announced that hotels can open soon, but there's no visitors. It all seemed a bit a bit odd in, to a lot of people that what's the point of opening hotels? There's only a few people who want to do stay vacations around here, isn't there? I mean, these hotels are just being knocked for six here. They are being knocked for six. And as the political member, I've got to try and find a way through this. The visit agency is going to be focusing on making sure we have a tourism season ready to go in 2021. The tourism team themselves, led by Angela Byrne and her fantastic team, are doing a wonderful job to try and help um, the hotel sector get through this. We're also trying our best to make sure that we're ready for 2021. In the meantime, we've got to look at the hotel sectors. How much money you know, should we be putting in as a government to support them to get over this initial shock? How much should we be giving them to get over the next period, going into winter when they've had no bookings over the summer Is your period. inbox full with this sort of subject, by the way? What, what, what's floating you know, the tourism boat as far as you're concerned? Is it that sector or am I missing something here? It's no, I think we've got to split it into sections. We've mm. got to look at the deposits and we are still working incredibly hard to try and find a way through. Yeah. One that is, is a solution that is fair to the taxpayer, one that is fair to the, the loyal fan, the one that is, is supportive of the hotel I'm industry. I'm just trying other parts of the tourism, you know, the, the, the uh, M MER, and, and obviously their numbers were down regardless, Look, it came out the other day, you know, the support there for the horse trams, the, the future of that, you know, where, where have you got priorities on any of this sort of stuff? No, I think at this present moment in time, we're still getting over this initial shock. Mm -hmm. this, this industry has had the biggest kicking it's probably had since foot and mouth but be, even beyond that i don't be think bigger than that because it was at least a, a tt presence for instance wasn't there i mean people weren't stopped from coming i think didn't have a festival we were starting to turn this corner and we were starting to expand the season to actually make sure the industry wasn't so reliant on those two flagship events especially the tt which has forty six thousand visitors on a more positive point, Paul, it, you know, we know that the Steam Packet have already opened um, their source of bookings for 2021. We've got 24, over 24,000 people already booked for 2021, 12,000 um, bikes already booked. What we do now need is to make sure that our airlines, those key routes are back open. Those key routes are taking okay, bookings well, ahead of 2021. What's your view on closed borders then? How supportive or otherwise are you of the current situation which is ongoing I mean there's no actual end date at all there isn't um, I think we've got to be we've got to promote where we can staycation there's a lot of people including myself my holidays been cancelled this year um, I think most people will say that their holidays have been cancelled this summer so what we've got to look at then is maybe considering stay you know staycation thinking that you know maybe going up north if you live in the south of the island go mm. south if you live in the north i'm trying to think are you, are you putting pressure different. on or have you got a view on the borders being closed and are, are you lobbying for them to be open for tourism I, or are you happy that what's going on i personally think the government's taking the right stance at the moment we've got to make the right decision at the right time oh yes. that's right mr quails well that's i'm sorry but that's my own personal view we do yeah. need to make the right decisions at the right time We've got to try and get those um, borders open. Clearly everyone open. wants to make the right decisions at the right time. I mean, the question it's, is, when is that time? Well, I think we're coming towards it. I think it's a case that if we, we do open up the borders, how do we then, as you say, do we have some sort of border control? How do we allow people into the Isle of Man without having to quarantine them? When will we get back to normal? You know, we go back to beginning of March. How do you think we'll be back to normal? I think it'll probably... You're talking about if we... The same... If we're in the same, the same levels of we same level where we were, and you were looking for much more, weren't you? Of course, I mean that was the whole pitch just before yeah. it started. That if you're talking about when do you think we'll get tourism back together, well, uh, yeah. to back to normality, to where we were at the confidence levels we were this year? Well, let's travel. I normal, think we're yeah. probably um, 12 months, 18 months away from that. I think 2021 is going to be incredibly difficult. I think a lot of it comes down to what happens in respect of the economy, um, what happens with regard to people's um, jobs, livelihoods. 
you know, extra cash? Will people have additional money, funds to spend? All of these are very difficult questions. We have got um, an incredible, incredibly difficult task. Do you feel you're being supported enough by Treasury? Then? Let's try that. Yeah, I have um, the highest regard for the Treasury Minister at the moment. I think I've worked with him closely. At on the moment. Number. Well, no, it, it's fair. You're asking me yeah. about... Um, I, can only, I haven't had a, a close working relationship with the Treasury Minister um, over the last four years, but during the um, COVID-19 situation, I've been involved in, in various um, workshops, meetings with the Treasury Minister and his team, and they've been fantastic. DfE and Treasury have actually, and all of the offices involved, have worked incredibly well to try and to get over that initial shock of COVID-19. People having to, to work from home, people yeah. suddenly find and they've lost their livelihoods. So, We've now got to find the same solutions or long-term solutions to get over the recovery. And what is the big thing in your, your inbox, I was trying to say, you know, is, is there one particular thing, that sector that is standing out or one particular problem besides, uh, we mentioned refunds, is it, do you get that sort of thing? Over or? the last six weeks, as a constituency MHK okay, Fronkin, constituency. as a constituency level, I've, my inbox has been full um, with phone calls, messages with regard to how they apply for a mirror, how they apply okay. for the support systems. They've been turned down for those systems. I, I've received hundreds and I'm absolutely proud as a constituency MHK to actually deal with every single one of those. And that we've been very successful with, with most of them. Um, some of them we just couldn't because they didn't quite fit the criteria. We have had to change um, the schemes to make sure that they fitted in people when we've left them out. So, yeah, I mean, DfE and Treasury have worked very closely and I have to thank the Treasury Minister and his team because when I've brought um, issues or that have been highlighted by constituents that they, their business didn't quite fit into one scheme or another, they listened, they changed the legislation. We made the schemes as broad as we possibly could to make sure that we captured as many people suffering during this pandemic. And it's 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 been I'm, I'm absolutely blown away by the level of support and the level of messages that I've received from constituents and wider people um, across this island, um, thanking the Manx government for what they've done in the last 12, 18, 14 weeks. And when we sit uh, here finally uh, next year, mm -hmm. you know, hopefully the grandstand, you know, with that sort of having to do a bit of crystal ball gazing, what sort of TT do you think it's going to be? I hope it's going to be a bigger, better TT. Bigger than Bigger, than, this bigger year, than bigger than 2019. Oh, really? You think? I, it, I think. Yeah, I think numbers. it is. I mean, I think I was the only person these last two weeks praying for rain. Now, you know, yesterday was t terrible weather, and I was really the only person probably on the island man that was very happy uh, because that was a race day. Yeah. It means that hopefully next year yeah. we all get some fantastic so practice, it, it and we'll get some bigger in the sense of numbers or bigger as an event. I mean, yeah, I'd like to think both. I think we'd like, as I say, um, the steam packets are are already taking bookings a lot will rely on us actually trying to get these routes filled because at the moment we've lost flyby which is one of our key routes we have easyjet we have um, a number of options and i know the new minister of, um, for infrastructure tim baker and his team and the previous minister ray harmer you know worked very hard to try and secure these new airlines these new routes okay. and i think now is the time if the island man was ever going to have a conversation around open skies now is the time and I've been very vocal on that that I think now is the time for the Isle of Man to look to see if we should look at those options should we remain them. should we remain open the, should we remain a hybrid the should Guernsey we have model buy an airline do the whole thing and lose lots of money you say lose money well but what about Arena's some, not doing well let's face it, it costs I, the tax I think it looking money. back I think the Isle of Man the people of the Isle of Man have been in and the Isle of Man government made the right decision to buy the steam packet company. It's not the same thing as an airline, is it? No, it's not. But we've got to go through the hurdles and have a look at the options. In respect to the steam packet, controlling our own destiny, controlling our seaports, actually having that in the Manx government's armoury yeah. during this COVID-19 has been invaluable. Indeed. And we should never lose that thought. We were going on a tangent that I wasn't expecting. Yeah. An airline, you want the Isle of Man government no, I said to look, buy it, I said or no. have a private one, or you know, closed skies means you will do this to I'll get those you licenses. Are, you are a very good reporter, Paul. What I actually I'm said, not, I'm just trying what to find I out. said was, it's now is the time to have a look at our open skies policy yes. once and for all. That's it. <laughs> Government needs to have a look at it. That's it. Okay, the debate will continue. We might pick this up next year at <laughs> the grandstand. Who knows?